Excuse me, do you mind if I join you? Hello and welcome to the Mental Suppository. I'm Brett Herholtz. This week is part two of our discussion with independent filmmakers Andy Sawyer, Bob Heskey, Joshua Leonard, and Skip Shea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Hourly. <laughs> Minutely. I mean, you know, you, yeah. you wanna you know want to make sure the quality is good too and and, and and hone your skills and and polish and everything like that. But right. that, that would have given you a like my biggest sounding board, I think, at that, you know, in, in those years was like, uh, I'd make these like big, you know, big uh, openings for like the, 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 the high school news. And th those were big like events for me. And I'm like, oh, God, are they going to like it? You know what I mean? And that was a that was a, that was a thing. But but still, there was exposure. Exactly. Exactly. And it was it was it was eyeballs on the stuff that you're, you're making, which is really cool, which is really important. Um, I look forward to the to, you know, the days when, you know, my movies are up on the big screen and everything. And I, I think uh movie theaters will always be kind of like a, a, a very uh, integral part of, uh, of the, of a uh, movie going experience, but not, not exclusive. You know, it's, it's really, really cool with all this streaming stuff. And actually I'm, I'm signing up right now with, uh, with reveal, which is a new streaming service that I want a couple of my movies to be shown on there. So, Oh, wow. That's pretty neat. Um, it's nothing's monetary at this point, but it's just a cool other avenue for people right. to check out your it's work. More exposure, um, yeah. yeah. I, I actually, just to say, interject, I actually know a person, uh, Rick Chandler, who actually has a couple of his films up on Tubi right now. So that if people can want, want to watch his films, they can literally just go to Tubi, which is a free ad supported streaming service. So literally it's like watching a, it's like watching it on, on video, like, you know, but you don't have to pay for it. You just right. have to deal with commercial breaks. Right. But yeah. yeah but that's, that's basically where, I, where I'm at. I mean, whatever, whatever way we can watch this or, or people can watch our stuff that we make and find our stuff that we make Bingo. Is, uh, is, is, is cool with me. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you, man. Yes. Uh, Skip, your thoughts on on that? Just you know the you know the the future of movie making and your feelings on that. Sure, I'll I'll, I'll be the the crotchety old man now. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, think I think we're all we that all, way now. Yeah, because because uh, you know the 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 good the good news is uh, with technology, uh, everyone can make a movie. The bad news is everyone is making a movie. Right. <laughs> um, so, you know what? It's almost like the whole uh, print on demand thing when. The uh, Fifty Shades of Grey came out. Yeah, it's, it's almost the same thing. It, it, it's it's oversaturated, and a lot of people um, are just making stuff. I don't I don't know that there is a lot of thought behind it. Um, and even uh, Bob said earlier, they took Amazon took his down. Um, so Amazon used to show independent films. Now they don't anymore. Now they just want to show their own content. Uh, so to 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 make it in a as a living. Uh, you either have to live in New York or LA where you can make these contacts where the gatekeepers are. Yep. Um, and that's, that's not here. Um, and, and that's, that's with, with so much content out there, it, it's such an oversaturated market unless you really, really, really know how to market yourself. Um, you know, you, then we're making it for love. Yeah. And Absolutely. I feel like all the guys, uh, everybody that was on the show tonight, that's what they're doing it for. Yep. And uh, I, I get that feeling tonight. Just, you know, people who just love to do what they do. And people have been doing it for pretty much yeah. their entire life. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I see Josh to be controlled by a studio system <laughs> to tell us what. I just see Josh who just waves his, he's just like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My entire life. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> yes. Pretty much. And I, I just, I feel that's a reassuring thing. You know, it's just like doing what you love to do. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It is for the love, for yeah. certainly. 
Yes. You know, I think the hardest, the hardest part about it was I worked in the field. I actually had a job working for a cable company for 20 years and I used to work in public access TV stations and I would actually train a lot of people how to do this. And I would run into a lot of people who had great belief of, Oh, I'm going to make a movie. It's so much easier. It's so, it's going to be so much fun. It's going to be so much easier. And then like, you know, it'd be like, okay and like you train them and then you know after about two weeks you'd be like oh i'm busy tonight i can't go to class tonight I'm like okay you know you get them and you might get occasionally a person that might want to do it but you have to have that right you have to have the 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 kind of tenacity just i'm not going to care what anybody else thinks i'm going to do what i want to do um it's about it's about creating something from my mind and that other people can experience and enjoy. And that's, that's just, you gotta, it's almost like jumping out of plane and then like eventually you find the parachute, <laughs> you know, you have to find the parachute and grab onto it and put it on as soon as you can. That's basically what it is. Well, it's funny, much like Josh, Jamie, Andrew and I decided to do the Worcester film wars last year. Oh, that was a great it's, project. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I've was never one of these done things, anything was, like that before. And I've, well, it was I've one never... of these things. I, I think I signed up for it on a whim. Yeah. I maybe messaged Jamie. He's like, well, I might have just signed up for the Worcester Film Wars again. <laughs> I remember I getting it, that call from from you, Brett. I was, and like, I think like, it was the next week later that we were like, "So, are we doing this for real?" Yeah, <laughs> I think we are. It's uh, going to premiere what in four or five days? Oh crap! And I remember <laughs> uh, sitting down with uh, Brett. Like he's like, "I want to do it this way. I want to do a black and white short, and I want to do it like that." And I'm like, "Okay." So I remember sitting down and showing him like Laurel and Hardy, like uh, which I've comics. seen. I mean, my grandfather, you know, yeah. he lo- loved Laurel. So I just kind of wanted to do something very Marx Brothers, Three Stooges. Uh, I just sort of attribute to that. And I just like getting people I knew who are like in, in you know, just love, love making, mm-hmm. you know, I've known most of my life who have done movies to just do that. And we filmed it in the basement of the Hotel Vernon with, <laughs> the, smell of, yes. with the smell of urine. Oh, yes. that was and, great. You know, just like the, the toilet, the flush that you could hear it coming down on the, the floor. That weird constant drip from the pipe that we told everyone to stay away from. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, the thing about it was, and I think this is probably one of the best uh, moments of that experience, was that everybody was just 120% on board. Like, yes. Everyone. Well, I think you, the main thing about yeah. it is that we realized that we we're going into this and the main thing that we're going to do is have fun. Yeah. And then we a day did. or two later, I got really sick. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you shouldn't have drank the water from the pipe. <laughs> I know. He got I'm the sorry. Rona. God damn it. But That's it was where it fan- came from. It came from the Hotel Vernon. It was just Vernon. fantastic because I just wanted to like uh, play upon all like those Worcester tropes. The Hotel Vernon had a speakeasy downstairs that yep. Babe Ruth used to go to. And I had this friend, uh, Devin Kurtz, who uh, I, I knew he had a baseball costume from Worcester. I didn't realize he had a, a classic Boston Red Sox costume. Oh, my God. So we had him sitting at the bar in his costume. And his, his wife, Heather, playing the uh, the uh, uh, bar, bartender, Madame Rhubarb. Madame Rhubarb. You know, just saying, you know, want another drink, babe? And it's just like, <laughs> it's just and, seeing it all come together and just, you know, I so I understand what you guys are talking about. And Kevin, pre- Kevin and Ed together. Yes. Ke- Kevin and Ed together. Oh, their, yeah. their comedic timing was just on point. They were just like. Because I remember talking with Jamie about it because I wanted kind of a Laurel and Hardy, but I knew it was going to be kind of a reverse where. Ed was kind of the uh, the taller, goofy guy, and Kevin was the so it was more like uh, Mo and Har- Mo and Laurel. <laughs> that was oh, they played it up very well. Yes, they did. It was it was just like the classic. It was everything I kind of wanted it to be in like the classic, uh, you know, comedies. And who knows? Maybe in the future, Hope and Crosby will come back. Oh, they! Yeah, I have the, a feeling the they one should. we were talking about it earlier, Andy. <laughs> we should totally do that again. Yeah. We should totally do that. Because I, I mean, the original down. idea I wanted to do was do a Hope and Crosby where it was like a invasion of the turtle people where I was playing off the turtle boy <laughs> thing. And Andy actually started making... Uh, I got the head tur- upstairs. Yeah. Wait a minute. That's right. We started talking about that before the pandemic. Yep. yep. That yeah, was our project. One moment. He's going to... Oh. oh, he's he's going to go show us. This yeah. is show and tell time, everybody. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, I just remember working on that film 
and just being completely blown away just by everybody. Just everybody was so into I would, what was Just the fact on. I was able to get in touch with the, the owner of the Hotel Vernon and just be able to do it. And he was it, like totally like, yeah, usually, see, I'm used to the thing. Usually what happens whenever I contact a local business and I say, hey, listen, I want to shoot a movie there. Like, well, how much are you going to give me for doing it? Yeah. And like, you know, it's <laughs> like, um, uh, I got like, um, what? 10 cents and they're like go pound sand you freaking liberal no like, everyone everyone at the vernon was very welcoming and uh and just oh, getting, up, hey, and uh, getting uh, brian nelson oh oh my god it's so awesome dandy that's, that's creepy crazy. that is awesome that's, oh i love that <laughs> oh my god wow. so that's josh fantastic. bob skip are you on board for the next one yeah, sure. Love to. <laughs> Let's do it. Sounds great. Absolutely. What, film wars? Welcome to pre-production. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I'll say I've actually found people in Worcester uh, to be very generous with me with their space. I mean, I, I in both of the features, Seeds and Trinity, uh, I was able to shoot in Nick's. Um, really? Yeah. And it, and it was, they were just, Nicole was just wonderful to work yes. with. Yes. Well, it's funny because uh, I had done a, a play at Nick's and uh, Josh actually did the sign for it. I was right. I did a, a Sherlock yeah. Holmes play, uh, yeah. The Crown Diamond, and it was supposed to be a sign that lit up that said, don't touch. And I'm just like, how the heck am I going to do this? It's like, oh, I know Josh. He's he's clever. <laughs> he's good with props. I'll ask him. <laughs> Josh, could you do this? High, this yeah. uh, Josh, light Josh up is sign? like the new Mikey. <laughs> Josh will do it. Josh will do yeah. it. No, yeah. he, he's better at doing these prop things than I was. So I just like, can you do something that lights up that says "Don't touch" when we turn off the lights? And he did, and it was it worked, right? Awesome. Yeah, mm -hmm. Vincent and Nicole actually both acted in my 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 oh, did... uh, fe feature seeds that's in the uh, the festival circuit right now. Actually, it's nominated for a Rondo Hatton Award, which is uh, a horror award that, that's that's. Um, Really, it's kind of exclusive. We were, I was stunned when when the nominations came out to see to see us listed there for cool. best independent film. But yeah, I miss Nick's. I just I, I it's one of the places after the pandemic I want to go back to because I I was supposed to do another play there. I was actually going to do Noel Coward's Hands Across the Sea on <laughs> Nick's small stage because it would have just been it would have been one of those stateroom scenes in the Marx Brothers sort of thing. Yep, that would have done the scene, and it's just like. I was kind of sad I wasn't able to do that, but at some point, because it was just, it was, it was probably 2013 doing that play was one of the best experiences of my life. You know, just as far as a production, I just, you know, gathered everybody together uh, for a short, short period, you know, a short period of time. A couple of those people ended up in the film I did for the uh, film wars, Ed and uh, Devin. So uh, it was just, you know, it's like Nick's is just, uh, it's like one of those great Worcester places that they really built up because, I've seen the pictures of Nick's before they built it up, and yeah, they just did a great job just cleaning that place up. They, they did the, the last the last live show I saw before you know COVID really hit was Nellie McKay at Nick's. Really, and it, and it was a great show. Yeah, um, yeah, I totally missed that place too. Yeah, Andy, you and Hans that went along with the. Uh... Yeah. Well, no, I actually I have to I have to be that guy who's got to get going. Okay, no, that's Cause... fine. Thank you so much for Loser! being here. It's okay. Shut up, Jamie. I gotta go shoot something. <laughs> yep. He's gonna go shoot something. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Shoot something. All right, dude. Andy, I love, I love that Andy. Mask. Thank you for talking with us. You're welcome. Thank you for having okay. me. I'll talk oh, to you absolutely. later, buddy. Okay. Um. All right, we'll you see you later, man. Hopefully, see you soon. You, you can see his. Actually, you can see his YouTube videos on his show on his Andy Land TV. Yes. On his. Yeah. YouTube. Do you wanna? Andy, do you want to drop any? Uh, do you have I any? I can talk about. I, Andy, you want to talk about your YouTube <laughs> channel real quick? I I, I mean, gotta go. My actors here, I'm missing my light. Yeah. Okay. Right. Go on. I'll talk. I'll talk Andy. about it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, anybody who wants to watch his YouTube videos, they can check it out on YouTube at Andy Land TV. Uh, I believe it's youtubecom slash TV. Feel free to subscribe, smash that like button, and check out all those oh, 400, hell yeah. 500 videos that he has up that no one's ever watched. But, well, um, you were on one, a few of them, weren't you, Andrew? I've 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 been on those videos since the beginning. I'm probably yes. in about 400 of them. <laughs> oh my god! Um, and um, just talking a little bit about his show, he has uh, we've done he's done horror road trips where he's gone off the location. You were telling me films. about one last week. Tell you know, tell us that one. One of the recent ones that we did was we actually went to uh, Conr North Conrith, Vermont, where they shot the movie 
Beetlejuice in 1988. And uh, it's a really interesting location because it's like out in the middle of nowhere. And the town is literally a straight line. It's just like a r- local road. And Oh, it's um, like uh, Shelburne Falls. Yes, it's a lot like that. But one of the things about it was is that the, t- the locations are like within a football stadium, of, like within 100 yards of each other, right. <laughs> uh, where they built the house, which is a big, huge facade for the film was in a bridge. big huge meadow the bridge is like literally down the street and then like the the there's um there's like a store that he runs in and out of yep. and then there was a uh, a school that renona Ryder runs out and she passes the test or whatever at when the she end gets of the on her bike and she takes yeah off and... it's like literally it's like literally right within there. um it's like within a it was within a hundred yards of each other it's crazy i think it's still fantastic tim burton won sammy davis jr is Beetlejuice originally. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How old was he when, Spooky, that, when baby. that happened? Oh, he would have been like. Uh, he was, I think he was getting up there. He was. I don't think he was that old when he passed, but uh, I, I think he was. You know, maybe sixties, seventies. I, I, I don't know. Like cancer though. That was where yeah. kind of put him in. Um, but, but still, yeah. just the idea of Sammy Davis Jr. is, is Beetlejuice. I just think is fantastic. But I, I love doing... Sammy Davis. Yeah, well, we've been. I was doing actually those... listening to him today. <laughs> Oh, really? oh, cool! But we've been doing these episodes forever. Uh, we do. We would do like theme episodes, like five horribly horrible films you must watch before you die. Was one episode <laughs> we did. We did an episode about like you know science fiction movies from the nineteen fifties. We did episodes about we we've covered like Japanese action movies. Godzilla was another popular episode of ours. We did an episode about the Leprechaun series with Warwick <laughs> Davis. <laughs> um that was another really popular one i'm really proud of actually um and you know we talked about ant films like ant movies like movies that were really like just oh, like them some, yeah like them oh okay. yeah. them was a big top, ant movie. top of the list yeah well you it's know. funny when you were mentioning hobgoblins all i could uh, uh mentioning uh uh was leprechaun i thought leprechaun. of the movie hobgoblins they which they ended up playing on a mystery science theater episode and it was just <laughs> such a god awful movie because it's like one point where they're watching it and the robot's like, "Oh, Joe, like, uh, oh, Mike, I can't take it. I'm getting out of here. Oh, oh you yeah. come back here. Oh, I can't take it. You come back here." <laughs> we talked. We did a we did an episode about Batman, about Superman. We just did a lot. Of, it's a lot. We did a lot of commentary like videos and posted them on you before all the commentary stuff is on, but nobody's seen it. So hey, you know. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But that was uh, that was something me and Andy have been doing for like I think we started doing that in like 2007, oh, 2008. Wow. Like so it was basically before... when it first happened. When yeah, YouTube basically when it first out. happened. And um, you know, we talked about like you know British movies and like all kinds of stuff. So uh, it's it was it's a good show to be part of, and I'm glad that we were actually we've actually been continuing to do it. Yeah, so it's fun. Well, why break up a good team? It's not a bad team at all. It's fun. Absolutely. And and like I'll tell you the truth, we just have just we he's just like one of those where like you're coming along with me, we're going out, we're gonna talk about this. And we'll, we'll be in the car friend. and talk yeah. about stuff. It's great. It, you always need one of those friends. Uh it, it's always great. I think in, in high school, Jamie and I had John Shaver. He was one of those guys. Yep. <laughs> He'd be like, guys, come over here and check out this cool thing. <laughs> Oh, come on, guys. We're going to go on a road trip. We're going to go see Jack Kerouac's grave. It's going to be awesome, guy. You know, you, you, need, yeah, exactly. you need friends like that. Well, I think my next big road trip, and this is something personal for me that I've wanted to do for a while, and obviously with the COVID, that's kind of kept me from doing it. But I'm finally going to do it. Me and Andy are planning a road trip out to Ticonderoga, New York, where the Star Trek experience is, where oh. um, they have, the, they have uh, people who have recreated the set, uh, the sets, from the original Star Trek. Is that plural sets? They had really they, they actually recreated all the sets from Star Trek. It's called the Star Trek Experience. You can actually wow. schedule a tour. And they've actually had William Shatner there. And so <laughs> uh because I'm a big comic comic band comic comic uh, big you know comic convention Comic-Con. guy. Yeah. I do cosplay. Uh and I do John Luke Picard, of course, I'm gonna <laughs> Why is that, as... Andrew? Why, why? I don't, I don't, I don't why, know. I, I don't know. I why, don't why do you know. do that? I, I mean, you know. Ever seen do you we have like a squeak sound effect that you could do over here so as he rubs his hand over his head? 
I mean, I, I mean, you know, doing the cosplay thing is fun because, like, you can number do one, you if I was to whisper in your ear, Commander Worf's head looks like a fanny. <laughs> would you Worf indulge you me in a laugh? Me. Shut up, Wesley. Yeah. Commander but, um, Worf's head looks like a fanny. A sense of humor, Rocky. I mean, Dennis. <laughs> obviously, I didn't get much of a chance to talk about my background, but obviously, doing the cosplay stuff, I've done yeah. like you know, I've done Doctor Evil. I actually have an Austin Powers costume as well. Um, I've done. Um, I did Ming the Merciless one year. Uh, Andy <laughs> actually awesome. designed. Andy actually designed that costume too. It was a good costume. Costume to play. I have that with me. I got to fix it up though. Um, and you know, you, you, it's just it's when you're in in a comic comic convention yes you're surrounded by people like us it's just so much fun to be in costume well it's funny you mentioned that i meant i i don't know if i mentioned it in a past show because i bought the old man luke costume from uh uh yeah uh force awakens and there was oh, one nice. I, I did rhode island comic con and so i had like the white luke costume and i was walking uh, walking th- through there with my wife and all of a sudden sid hears this girl goes hi luke skywalker and i didn't hear and she's like brett turn around and it's like oh Oh, hi. Yeah. You got the perfect beard for it. Yeah. yeah. I actually uh, have two girls as well, and I, I bring them to the comic conventions as well. And one year, we actually dressed up my older daughter as Ray and my younger daughter as BB-8. <laughs> and we had the helmet, and we had, like, you know, a big, like, couple of pillows with, like, a big white T-shirt with the symbols all over it. And uh, it was just so funny because the Star Wars people, like the 501st, were like, oh, my God, they're so cute. <laughs> it was great. That's, That's nice. great. You know, just raising your kids up and having, you know, those nerd moments with your kids, <laughs> exposing them to movies like Star Wars is just so awesome. You know, it's great. <laughs> well, out of curiosity, well, what was the, uh, what was the last movie everybody saw? Ooh, oh. I think the last movie in the theater? No, no, like literally the last oh. movie you saw. Because for me, uh, I saw Godzilla versus Kong. Okay. And honestly, I have to say that I enjoyed it. Well, I it's a Godzilla fun. movie. Well, How can you I not mean, love Godzilla? Well, with, with the, the overwhelming CG you know, effects that are in it, you know, that, that kind of did bring some of it down. But the, the fact that it was a Godzilla movie that brought back a lot of like some of the zany, crazy stuff that used to happen in like, the 60s and 70s Godzilla, like you know, putting on like mind-controlling devices and inside of a giant <laughs> skull and a mecha Godzilla, it was, it was actually very entertaining. I had a good time watching it. That that does look like a fun movie. I have to watch that. I um, I, w- I think you should take take time watch it. I think for me though, my movie my movie viewing is very eclectic. Like I'm a definitely a very big movie like classic movie fan. I think the last movie that I saw was Zulu with uh, Michael Caine. I was just watching that not too long ago. That that's a great film. That is a good film. Michael Caine. You got Michael Caine in it. Playing Michael Caine as Michael Michael Caine Caine. (laughs) with Michael Caine as Michael Caine, guest starring Michael Caine. How about you, Josh? What was the last movie you saw? I watched uh, the Zack Snyder's Justice League last Saturday. Oh, Oh, I finally got to that too. Oh, boy. My condolences, my friend. Dude, can can of worms. No. What's your your thoughts? I I liked it. I liked it. Yeah. I thought, well, it's better. <laughs> like a skip. <laughs> so did I. Yeah. <laughs> it's better. I watched it in black and white. Yeah. Uh, then the theatrical, which was. I, I'll a, agree with uh, that. Yes. Yeah. Horror show. Um, I don't know. Like, yeah, because you, I don't know. All the characters more fleshed out. There was more stuff going on. Granted, it's mm-hmm. still not like a great movie. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. but I enjoyed it a lot more. And, you know, I, I don't know. That. I How did you feel about you know you being a, a filmmaker and trying to take advantage of all the 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 scope of, of film that you can take? What what do you think about that four point three aspect ratio? That did bug me. Thank <laughs> you. Okay, good. That bugged <laughs> Jamie. I feel yes. so vindicated, man. I was yeah. like, I can't watch this movie because I'm just so thrown by it. I know. Uh, I guess uh, Zack Snyder became enamored with the uh, the whole uh, IMAX sort of thing. Yeah, Even that's though, that's what I heard too. Yeah. But it's it's showing on people's TVs at home, and, streaming on HBO Max. It's not right? like showing on a <laughs> exactly on like a two story tall. It's on your phone. All, all of our devices that we currently have, whether it's computer, phone, yeah. or your, your sixteen phone, nine, exactly. 
Right. Exactly. Uh, yeah. but, but you know what? You know, I think he might have said that just to be like, that's the reason. But I think he wants a distinction in a way between, like, if they show a clip from his cut or the Whedon cut, that's actually they, like, automatically point. know what the difference. That's a good yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a great point. Yeah. That's kind of what made sense to me, but yeah. it, it, it bugged me. It did. <laughs> Like All right, Josh, you win this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 didn't, I didn't mind that. I, I didn't mind the aspect ratio. And because it, to me, it was weird. Like when Lighthouse came out, everybody thought, oh, well, my God, this is all so artistic and, and brilliant yeah. and genius. And then Zack Snyder does not like, oh, this is garbage. Like, what's the difference? <laughs> yes, you're right. <laughs> what is the difference? What movie did you watch last, Skip? Uh, the last movie I watched was um, The Man Who Knew Too Much, the Hitchcock film. Oh gosh! Um, nice. Because uh, and 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 I and I don't it's I don't know why because I really like hate Doris Day. Um, <laughs> like she Doris you know, Day. She she emotes. Do you know well, what I mean? She's that, dead that, now, so she doesn't. Well, anyway, emotes. she won't. It's not like any spoilers. She emotes daisies now. And don't <laughs> yes, eat them. <laughs> no, if there's it, anyone it's, that mugs to the camera. Yeah, when she. Yeah. Oh no, she, Jim Carrey. No. Uh, <laughs> No, it, it's. I mean, Jimmy Stewart. I mean, it's. It's. It's a. It's a good story, but um, it's, I don't think it's one of Hitchcock's best. But you know, it's. It was the last thing that was on Turner Classic Movies, which was oh. basically what I always have on in the house. Oh, that's nice. a good thing. Nice. Turner Classic Classic Movies. Oh man, I'm, I love that channel. Oh, so I actually I. started rewatching a film I absolutely love, uh, A Study in Terror, which is a uh, Sherlock Holmes film. Sherlock Holmes. Uh, it's a Sherlock Holmes versus Jack the Ripper. It stars uh, John Neville, who was in, who was a theater actor who didn't actually get a big break till he did, or he didn't get noticed till he did The Adventures of Baron Munchausen in 1989 with uh, Terry Gilliam. But years and years before that, he played Sherlock Holmes in this uh, small British film, and it was uh, it was written by the guys who uh, wrote Ellery Queen, the Ellery Queen oh. novels. And uh, I always really loved the film because. I mean, it's campy. It's very, it's very much like the 1960s uh, Batman, yeah. but uh, it just, it had that charm to it. It had the charm. Yeah, exactly. But it also, what I loved about it, it has had, it had the most, uh, the best depictions of the characters of uh, Inspector Lestrade and uh, Mycroft Holmes, because uh, Mycroft in the books was always supposed to be, uh, was supposed to be uh, corpulent. And in, in all the movies they, they've done, they've always tried to make Mycroft Sherlock's brother looked like Sherlock, and it always bugged me. And right, Mycroft was supposed to be... match each other, but well, it was should... one of these things. Mycroft was always supposed to be like the uh, the he was supposed to be like mentally better than Sherlock's. Mm -hmm. He was Sherlock's smarter mm -hmm. brother, but he was also Sherlock's lazier brother. He never left the uh, the his seat in the Diogenes Club. So you know, Sherlock's always did Sherlock always did the the, the legwork, but he he ba Mycroft basically ran the English government. So they got this actor Robert Morley who was just look like like Mycroft. And besides Charles Gray from the Jeremy Brett series, I always thought he was the best actor to play Mycroft Holmes. And another one was uh, uh, Frank Finley, who played L Instructor Lestrade in, the, uh, in the, the Study in Terror, always looked like the way Conan Doyle described Lestrade, who was kind of rat-faced looking. <laughs> hey, let's have Bob actually answer the question also. What's the uh, last movie you saw? So the last movie I saw was actually last night. So I I'm, didn't have my kids this weekend. So I get a bottle of rye and have a couple glasses of it. And I, I watched a campy <laughs> horror called Jacob's Wife with Barbara Crampton in it. And, ah, uh, that was a good fun movie. So it was it was it was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, Travis Travis Stevens directed that. Oh really? Wow. Yeah, I, I met I, Travis at, at the Boston Underground Film Festival. He's a very nice guy. It's a second feature. It's well done. It's well done. You should check it out. Yeah, Larry Fessenden plays the... Uh, yes, the priest. The, the priest. Jacob, yeah. La yeah. I don't know, do you guys know Larry Fessenden's work at all? No, not he, not particularly. He's he's a New York uh, horror filmmaker. Very small, low budget, but really good. Like, really, really, really good. Oh, nice. Um, and and he's, um, he's starting to get... There was a period when he had a small role in everything. But uh, but he he I was glad that Travis put him in that role in this one because he's good, he, he's a good actor. You know, speaking about uh, uh, discovering new films and that sort of thing, I actually discovered a film that really kind of blew me away. I was actually, uh, I was actually just kind of perusing the streaming world, 
that there is out there. And I ran into uh, a movie directed by George Romero. It was called Night Riders. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of that movie. Really? No. It's a very interesting movie that he made, and it's it doesn't have any zombies in it. Um, and it's basically or about crazies. A, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's about a traveling troupe of rena- Renaissance fair people, and instead of having horses, they use motorcycles. And I was watching it, and they have jousting with motorcycles. And they all what? have armor on. It's just a very interesting. Ed Harris is in is it. it. Is it from the seventies? It's it's like nineteen eighty. Okay, because oh, that's around right. the time motorcycles are huge. Yeah, so it was like <laughs> right at that peak of like, and they're wearing like suits of armor and riding on motorcycles. I mean, if you can think, the movie Excalibur with on motorcycles. motorcycles. Yes. <laughs> That's pretty much the closest. I mean, okay, I'm going to say this right now. You get to see a lot of Ed Harris in this movie. A lot of Ed Harris in this movie. <laughs> Maybe I don't but, want to see it then. Yeah. <laughs> but it also has Tom Savini in it too. Ooh. And the usual character. Oh, now he's going to watch it. Okay, Ooh. now I'm interested. Well, yeah, Tom Savini. Come on. You get to see a lot of Tom Savini too. The Godfather um, of Gore, of course. <laughs> but I thought it was it was just very interesting to watch uh you know it was just a different kind of film and i was just like oh wow you know and i could i could tell like george romero had a very tough uh time actually directing a lot of movies because of the you know the financial requirements and everything else of that but it was you know it looks like it was shot in pennsylvania very interesting film i would recommend it to anybody who really wants to watch it obviously george romero king of the independent horror movies uh especially in the zombie zombie genre check it out Okay, a movie I wouldn't recommend uh, that's on the streaming that was on the streaming service was a film called Otako Vampires. What? <laughs> it was on what? Amazon for a while, and it was like this really, 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 really. It looked like it was done by college students, and I, I it was one of these films that I'm surprised Rift Tracks hasn't uh, riffed yet because it looks like one of those films that that just. It it's you know it started out being a serious film. It's like oh no, we we did it as a comedy. It's like no, this film's shit. And uh, you're yeah, Otako Vampires, calling which it sounds comedy. like Taco Vampires. Yeah, calling it a comedy. Is, yeah, a com- calling it a comedy is always a way to cover your ass. Oh yeah, <laughs> and this was definitely the way. It's like it's just like it looked like it was shot on somebody's like uh, Panasonic Sonic camera. And, uh, you know, the shitty. sound's really off. Sort of like the movie <laughs> Roller Gator. Oh, it's like that Roller Gator, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's always an interesting way to see when you, when, they, when you see the production quality. You know, like, we did this on purpose. And I'm like, no, you didn't. <laughs> no. Oh, no, 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 you did not. No, you didn't. <laughs> you did this because that was, you, you borrowed your mom's camera. Come on. <laughs> That's up to you're, it. You're using the the, uh, the the microphone on the camera. And that's <laughs> never a good thing. You're using the fade button on the camera. Yeah. <laughs> you're using the effects on the camera. Which, when we were teens, that was fine. It worked. Right. You know, suddenly you decide, I'm going to go all retro. I'm going to do my my latest film on VHS. Well, that's the funny thing. I'm, I'm looking on on uh, Facebook, and there's all like all these ads for like, it's like, Make your video look retro like it was on VHS. And it's like, weren't we trying to get away from that? <laughs> what happened to high definition? Now we're trying to look like shit again? It, it, it's funny, though, that that's never gone away. You know, and, and Andrew, I've, I've obviously seen you at Rock and Shock. Mm-hmm. And, and, and there are booths there that still oh, yeah. sell VHS and, and people buy them. Yep, and, um, I've seen that. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- there's a, a company, they used to do the video nasties, Vipco, yep. in, um, in the UK. And they're, they're, I think they're trying to make a comeback. In fact, they, they want to put Priest Hunter in, in one of their anthologies. Oh. And part, cool. of, part of what they're going to do is they're going to release a limited number of them on VHS. Oh, wow. And, and there's, there's an audio. It's kind of like vinyl, how vinyl never went away. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Like, well, I remember. Funny. Andrew, we'd mentioned that we wanted to do a, or you, we, we talked about we wanted to do a, uh, a zombie film that takes place at a horror convention, didn't we? Oh yeah, I had a whole plan. I had a script for it. I was like right now to treatment. It was going to be called Convention of Carnage, 
<laughs> and so like you know you'd have like a convention it would be a horror convention you'd have all the different personalities you'd have like you know the old actor who's just like only known for one part then you'd have the scream queen then you'd have like some guy who sells swords and they're all made in china and they're crappy oh yeah uh, all, the, all the cliche characters have all to the be cliche there. characters that go to yep. conventions and then the, there's a zombie invasion and all of them have to kind of combine together to survive the convention of carnage and well I what like, i thought would be great because you story. The, the last yeah. convention we, we were at when i was vending at rock and shock you were wearing this great uh costume you know the fallout costume with like the the, the mask with oh. the, uh, the speaker box and yep. on it and i just thought that would be great if you were the guy at the convention. You were trying to you trying to tell people we got to get out of here. We got to get out of here. And we can't. You can't understand what he's saying. So, it's like and I get subtitles underneath me. It's like what are you saying? And then as he's saying that, somebody gets like bit in the neck or something like that. Oh god! And then under or the, we have like, oh, one god, guy, or one guy is like a big like special effects guy, and he's he's got special effects zombie makeup on him, and we all think he's the, the zombie. We beat him up. He's like ah. Stop! No, stop doing like. Oh, okay. Be like the Bill Murray moment, yes. you know, and like Zombie Land. Zombie Land. We we're, like, we're like killing him. He's like, now he's a real zombie. What do we do? <laughs> <laughs> what? Doomsday Prepper guy. You yeah. Know? Oh, that was actually another project I was working on too. I know. Thanks, COVID. Thanks, COVID. I I I, I, I really miss Rock and Shock. Um, yeah. And part of it is because, as you know, as a low, no, no budget f filmmaker from here, mm -hmm. um, I would look and see who's coming, uh, like Lynn Lowry, and I would say, "Hey, Lynn, do you want to be in my movie?" Right. So, like, I don't have to fly her here. I don't Rock have to put her in a hotel. Yeah. Uh, so, I know. I know Kevin's talked about you know resurrecting it in some form yes. or another. So I hope he does. You know, I, I hope. I hope it so comes too. back because it's like it was a great convention. It was it was it, was, it was just great. It was just such a lot of fun. I'll I'll be more than happy to help him out with. Anything oh, absolutely. He needs to get done. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I'll dress up as a Ghostbuster. <laughs> oh yeah. But yeah. So I mean, like I wouldn't you know, dress up as a sheet because it might get bad connotations. Oh man. No. <laughs> but well, it's like Rock but, and Shock though. Rock and Shock. Oh my God! I was there for the first one. I remember that was such a great convention to be yeah. at. And it's not just—it wasn't just such a great convention for filmmakers. There were authors, there were artists, yeah. there were hard. It brought were everybody actors, together. Yeah. And it was just like it wasn't Practical just a place. Effects makers. It was like a place for networking. You know, it was a great because you'd have the ability to kind of like say, "Hey, you make movies too." Oh, we make movies too. And like me and Andy actually had booths there, and we sold movies forever. And we would run into people and we say, hey, by the way, do you want to be in our movies? And we actually got a couple people who were at the convention to come to our, to his backyard and shoot a movie or whatever. And that's what we did. Uh, we actually also worked on an Aliens fan film back in the day. Um, and we actually presented it to, um, oh gosh, what's the actor's name who is, uh, who is an Aliens? John Hurt? Not, not John Hurt, Aliens. The Michael second. Bean? Michael Bean, yes, that's the one. Oh wow! And, and we actually he was there. Reese, Reese was there, and no so way. we had made we had made this 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 aliens fan film, and uh, we put it on YouTube again. This is actually before YouTube. We actually put it on like a website, and it was downloaded a whole bunch of times, like fifteen. And we didn't even have the pulse rifles. We actually <laughs> made our own. We actually got oh. airsoft guns. We we turned his we turned his. Uh, Andy's like uh, uh, garage into a space station. We That's built cool. our own models. It was crazy. And, we had the Nostromo. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was just it was <laughs> just like we just did all kinds of stuff, and then like you know we put it on on the internet. It got like 15,000 views or 20,000 views or something crazy like that. Oh, that's fantastic. And then like <laughs> we were at Rock and Shock and we we're just like giving out copies for free because literally we couldn't sell the thing because right. it was copywritten. Yeah. And, um, you know, Michael Bean was there and we were like, here you go, Mr. Bean. Thank you for inspiring us and stay frosty. <laughs> great. One of the greatest moments I can say is I said, stay frosty to Michael. Stay frosty. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was, I was able to get Lynn Lowry in my first feature Trinity. I was able to get Barbara McNulty to be in seeds because they were here. Mm -hmm. Just give them, give them one page of dialogue 
um, you know, a couple hundred bucks, maybe a little more. If only <laughs> like, you could do the same thing with like Malcolm McDowell. Right? I know. That right. <laughs> I, I have a I have a feeling, in, as far as union status goes, he's not Vicor. So oh, he, he's. I know. Oh. Hey, Malcolm, you'll uh, will you do this for uh, non-union? You know, volunteer, hang out for a couple hours, maybe get some pizza. Would you do okay. it for a Kit Kat bar? Do <laughs> that my work. <laughs> Do it for hey, gentlemen, I apologize. I have to run. I have a 9:30 uh, podcast. I got to get ready. Oh, for that's fine. All right. Thank, thank, thank you so much, Bob. Bob. No, you guys thank are you awesome. Thank you for being I, here, Bob. I, I really thank enjoyed you. my time. Thank you oh, very I'm much. Glad. I'm so glad. Do you have anything you want to plug? Yeah, it's a plug. You know, I would just say, you know, um, the Afraid of Nothing podcast. If anybody is interested, Check it's it www.afraidofnothingpodcast.com. But I had a great time tonight, guys, and I really appreciate you having me on. Oh, thank you're very well. Thank you for coming here. All right. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye, Bob. Bye. 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 And then there were five. <laughs> All right. Now that Bob's gone, let's talk about him. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> no, but um, I, I, I really hope that Kevin gets that back up off the ground. Because I do, that too. Was such a great local area. Um, Josh, where are you located, actually? Are you located locally in New, New England? I, I'm in Worcester. Oh, even better. You said you were right across from one of the breweries we were supposed to meet at, or...? Uh, yeah, like let's uh, all get a drink. Redemption. I was there earlier. That's the one I was thinking of. Yep. Redemption. Soon, Ron. man. Redemption. Soon. Yep. Yep. It's, Definitely. Uh, I've already got my first shot. I'm going to get my second one uh, this uh, this coming yeah. week. Nice. I'm getting... going to get his. So yeah. I think uh, once we all get our shots, we need to hang out and uh, yes, make a production. We got yep. our zombie right. shots. We got our zombie, zombie shots. shots. We're all inoculated. Then we're all inoculated. Yeah. We'll be the inoculated <laughs> horror have, team. I have now the government chip brain. inserted in me now. The government can track <laughs> exactly. me. I got chipped. I, got I actually chipped. went to Gillette Stadium. You slime my... me. Me too. Yeah. You slime me. <laughs> Isn't it great, Gillette Stadium? You get it to was, actually. It was like a well-oiled machine, man. Not, oh my god. Oh, you guys Damn. went to Gillette Stadium. I went to a CVS and Waltham. <laughs> And I went to the the Natick Mall, and just like just like everyone said about the uh, Gillette Stadium, you're in, you're out. I mean, it is oh, a right. oiled machine. Yep, it's crazy. No, it is. And the government it's... isn't run by a clown. Right, right, <laughs> exactly. Sorry to make that part <laughs> political. <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> uh, I, uh, you anyway, the anyway back to film. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, you know, hope the, I, I, I'm. It's not just uh, rock and shock, but all the conventions because they're all just so. Well, even important. Josh talk about you know doing set design for Spooky mm. World. I just think that was just like, that's just so cool. Just being you know just doing these, like really creative things for different. Yeah. Uh, it's you know, be, it needs to be a part of like. Uh, for me, it's I've always been kind of a like a jack of all trades and like kind of doing. A bit of just doing everything basically or a bit of yeah. everything you know and yeah. that's that's the fun part for me i mean like what's really i mean i feel like my calling is to be like a director of movies wow you know but well, the nice i think about doing it all well the nice thing about you movies i found is you have the nice little comedy twists at the end you always even with the last twist. one it's yes. like you had the uh well, you had the whole thing of like alien invasion, like, alien abduction. Yes, and then you find out, oh, oh it's a really big ass acid trip, <laughs> and that was so fantastic. Do you well, have more? More? Yeah. more? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you I up, uh, was like, wow. Thank you, thank you. And uh, that was, the other one that, with pistachio. Same, is, you think it's same thing be, as uh, pistachio? I was just yeah. gonna say pistachio has that fantastic twist at the end of Thank it. You. you know, a, a couple That's trying to spice up their love life. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Brad. Oh, well, well, that was the thing. I was like, I want to make like this crazy saw movie with like Sam yeah. Raimi angles. Yep. In the beginning, it's yes, like, and then coom, coom, and everything is snap zooms, boom, you know, and um, and just really, you know, ratchet up the 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 terror and then just have this like flip because when it comes to the uh like the film wars to be the most memorable you gotta make them laugh you know what i mean oh hell yeah yeah Yeah. you know and i know the the rift was like it was kind of a drama but there were a lot of jokes in it and it was like really you know kind of like emotional at the end but but since then i'm like it's got it's gotta it's gotta have like laughs in it to like really really solidify it or or really to be memorable and what's funny about pistachio is is so i shot that the weekend before i got married right and so we we filmed that with friends that were visiting us from 
the UK. So they're yes. we're here for, they're here for our wedding, and but I was like, hey, be in my movie for this thing. <laughs> You've got a cool exotic accent. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And he worked for Parliament too. Oh, holy yeah. mackerel! I know. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So so we we make the movie. I put it all together. It comes out really great. So we get we're getting married on that Saturday, and they're showing it at at the, the contest at Ralph's that night on Saturday. And um, I go to my my fiance at the time. I'm like, hey, so after the wedding, can we go to can we go to the film wars and see if we win? She's like, we'll see how things go. And I'm like, fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna push things. Yeah, exactly. So we have a great wedding. We get married. <clears throat> we get married at the Elm in Millbury. You guys That's right. I saw the pictures. Oh, That's nice. fantastic. Yeah. So we got married there, and then we had a reception at uh, at the Citizen, which is no longer there, which it used to yep. be. Uh, I, I forget. It's, it's very actually uh, Jamie and I. We I think after that's one of the Rocket that's... Shocks, we had di we had dinner yep. there one night. Used to be the atrium was, back in the day. Remember that the was a really cool bar. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. They, yeah. They had the bacon popcorn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was fantastic. <laughs> I our, missed out on something. I heard. oh man. Yeah. yeah. Our, did, wedding, I'm sorry. our wedding. Our wedding is wrapping up about ten o'clock, and I go to my then wife. Now I'm like, so can we can we go to Ralph's? and go see the film wars and she's like okay we can go so i'm in my tux she's in her wedding dress we go with a bunch <laughs> of people from the wedding and you know we go over there and we kind of like stomp in there and and uh <laughs> well you know it's like bikers and you know people oh, are that is such a rough yeah i know i can think of it on the side of a rebel building. crowd <laughs> anyway it's just, this is just an epic story anyway so it's a, like the last three movies and they show our movie last and of course it's like got a great response and um and then we wait around for a while and my wife is looking at me now she's, <laughs> she's heard this story a bunch of times <laughs> go away go. <laughs> i have the same effect on my wife <laughs> anyway <laughs> anyway so we wait around for a while and they announce the winners and we won and so that you know they give me the microphone i'm like i just got married today and my wife comes out like in her wedding dress like Demi! <laughs> like in front of this like crazy crowd anyway nice. it was just really super epic well if it makes you feel any better we actually went down to spider gates on our wedding night oh cool oh, so nice. it was one of those things that uh somebody at in our wedding was talking to one of my friends who was from philadelphia and they were looking for cool things to do before they left and a friend was telling about spider gates and my uh friend uh john shaver came over and he says oh what you talking about and they go oh we're talking about this uh gate this um Cemetery down in uh, in Lester, down in Spider Lester, Gates. yeah. And uh, John's wife comes over and says, "What are you talking about?" He goes, "Oh, Spider Gates." And he explains. He goes, and "She's like, we should go down there." <laughs> and all of a sudden, he starts building a building, and all my wedding guests and Sid hears about it, and she's like, oh, nice. "And I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to get arrested on a wedding night because <laughs> I'm starting no, to get you do. Hard. Yeah, come on, you make do. it memorable. Yeah. And then suddenly, it's like she talks me into it. And I was like, "Okay, let's get you know." If we're gonna yeah, do, you it, got a couple of pictures while you were yeah. there. Yeah, so, so we just, you know, we're all in it. So you gotta imagine us. We all get, we go, all get down there, and my friend Scott's like, uh, "Oh, I know the best way there." Sid and I get there first. We're we're there, and we're like, "Where the hell is everybody?" And so I get on my cell phone. I was like, "John, where are you?" He's like, "Oh, Scott said he has a no, knows the place." He goes, "Yeah, you talk to Scott." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so I think we finally found them. We all went down you know, uh, uh, in our wedding best down yep. to the, you know, down to this Quaker cemetery. Yep. All the leaves and the dead brush and everything. But it, it, this is where it gets better. I was uh, in a gown and heels. Sid was in a gown and heels. Right, yep. Right, right. And so I this is where that. it gets better. Nothing happened down there. You know, it's like, it was, it was pretty peaceful. I mean, it was pretty chill. It's nothing like they say. There was no ninth gate to hell where you'd end up falling. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, it's like, no, you already got married. It, they knew. Yeah. yeah. New. Ouch. But uh, so it was the funniest part is we're 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 getting back up to our cars and there's a forest ranger there parked. And I think he's waiting for like teenagers to come out of the woods. And here are these like 35 something or others coming up in our wedding get best. And, seems, and he's probably yeah. just looking at this like, oh, the hell with this. I'm done for the night and just drives off. <laughs> right. Move along. So I, I know what you're saying, Josh, you know, just yeah. that sort of memorable wedding long, moment long. i uh, filmed i filmed uh one of my first features was actually filming on the road that leads to spider gates oh really yeah nice. we actually 
we actually paid for like a detail so we got a cop car because a, oh. a lot of our, mo- our uh, chunks of our movie took place on, on a swamp road mm-hmm. and um i, I kind of picked this street out of a hat because i thought i could get us a cop car in Leicester because i knew some people anyway so the fictitious town in the movie was called earl the town of earl which was a reference. It sounds to, like a, a New England town. Yeah, it was a, like oh, a reference to like a Coen Brothers thing. Or Earl. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like the Hotel Earl. But anyway, so the town was called <laughs> Earl. And so we're shooting there. And as, as we're like hanging out, uh, this, these people start walking up from the Quaker Cemetery, which is Spider Gates. And um, I don't talk to them, but one of the actors talks to them. And, and I was just like, hey, hey man, are they, are they cool? Like those people cool? And he's like, yeah, yeah, they're the family. They're, they're fine. You know, the cops are here with us doing the thing. Do you know they're called the Earls? And this is called Holy Earl. Holy mackerel. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, I just picked this place out of a hat because I yeah. thought it would be cool because Spider Gates and this is a cool, like, in the cop stations right there. And I'm like, yeah. Th- so it's the Earl Cemetery because that that's the family plot. And this is called Earl Road. And, wow. and those are the like Earls. A lot of like things <laughs> lining up, you know. It was uh, it was wild, but yeah, like we didn't actually film in the actual cemetery, right? But um, yeah, uh, I've heard about it a lot, and you know, growing up because I'm from Leicester, I'm right? From, right. Yes. I think for me, my funniest uh, filmmaking story is when well, it's uh, not my funniest, but it's well, the- I'm sure <laughs> it's well. I mean, like, but it's amazing I, I've. Still. I have many stories on the lines of that. I remember a, a person I know I used to work with a lot and he uh, needed my help because he did military police fire and uh, fil- like prop rental. And so he calls me up out of the blue. He's like, Andrew, I need you to come over and help me on a film. So I go running to him and helping him out. I'm like, all right, what do you need me to do? He's like, here's a Boston police uniform, put it on. <laughs> I ended up being in the background as an extra because like he didn't he didn't trust anybody that was on the film set. He's like, I don't trust anybody here. I need you to put the uniform on. They needed somebody to be in a cop uniform, so here you go. So I'm wearing this uniform. Am I? It's supposed to be a crime scene. I got a flashlight going, mm-hmm. you know, back and forth. Hey man, extra work is real work. I know exactly, exactly. You know, you it's like uh, Stanislavski said. You know, you know, there are no small. There are no small roles, man. No nope. small actors. <laughs> so I did the best with my flashlight. I'm doing my thing. And then afterwards we take a break and there's like a coffee shop next, next door. And of course I'm wearing the <laughs> fucking oh, full God. uniform, like badge, yep. hat, gun, everything. Like, well, it's an airsoft gun. It wasn't real. And right. um, I go in, I get my coffee. I walk up to the desk. I'm about to like pull out my wallet. The lady behind the counter is like, <laughs> it's okay go ahead and go from ahead. that day on and Andy just... wore that outfit for <laughs> free coffee no <laughs> no but i was just like no citizen i'll pay for my coffee thank you very much be safe out there like, right percent of this car of some sort what? it's in in the direction of the place that sells chili the suspect is hatless I repeat, he's not wearing a hat. He would, he would call me whenever he needed somebody to be a cop in a in the car background. with four wheels. Like, <laughs> and he would have he would have SWAT team uniforms. He'd have like military uniforms. He'd have all kinds of stuff. So he'd always throw me and stuff. And it was just weird the way people would look at you with the uniform on. Like suddenly they're like looking at you like, like yeah. the eyes would avert. Like yeah. they'd be like, badge gun, badge gun, badge gun. <laughs> it's really weird. But Suddenly, you're expected to direct traffic. I know. Actually, it's yeah. just a Megatron <laughs> pistol, but don't worry about it. <laughs> it's a squirt gun. <laughs> it's a super soaker. But yeah, so um, I guess that kind of started me doing cosplay, like weird <laughs> stuff. Like I cosplayed, um, I cosplayed Sean Connery from Outland. So I have like not from uh, what the movie that he plays the thong in. I was gonna no. say the red. No, that's thong. Zardoz. No way. No, I don't have that physique, and I, you know, nobody wants to see me in a speedo. Who cares? I'll just be shitting around in this. But I had, I <laughs> did, I did like a cosplay of um, of Sean Connery as in, in Outland. You know, with the the cop uniform and everything. I went to a convention. I'm like thinking, oh, this is kind of cool. It's a little obscure. People will get it. Hey, where's the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> Over there. 
You know, I like, I actually, you know, even though I make a lot of uh, props and, you know, funny, you know, I got all the stuff here, you know. Back but stretcher? It, but what's weird is that, like, I've never actually done, like, convention stuff until very recently when Brett actually was like, hey, why don't you come by and just hang out and do the convention that I'm doing? Yeah. So, like, that was, like, the first time I've actually walked around on a convention floor. and uh, It's so much fun. I mean, it was actually really fun, yeah. Especially like doing the conventions, you know. Yeah, I, Halloween yeah, for adults. Yeah. And and even that time, you know, I, I wasn't dressed up, you know, because normally for Halloween itself, I do make some kind of outfit or anything. Like, for this Halloween, I'm going to be a uh, Starship Trooper. So, I've been making, like, you know, I got the Starship Trooper gun. Nice. Over here that I'm working on, so nice. you know, all that cool stuff. But um, but I never actually dressed up and did a convention yet. And you know, when things open up again, I think I might be yeah oh, more join, tuned to doing join that. Us. I'm join doing us. an Indiana Jones my next one. <laughs> next convention, I'm Indiana yeah. Jones. I'm actually learning how to use a whip for that. Too. Nice, nice. But it's just Junior. <laughs> it's you, Junior. <laughs> Dad. Dad. Again, with the beard. It's perfect. It is. <laughs> I find when I shit around. Come on, Dad! <laughs> I mean, they skip to do it, too. Where's That's your for hat? blasphemy, you dick. All we, need, all we need is like... Um, it's baseball. There you go. <laughs> all we need is like a, a short Asian kid named Short Round. Oh, okay, we can't get away with knows. that. We can't oh, get away with that anymore. No, we can't. Yeah. No, we can't. No time for love, Dr. Jones. <laughs> Even then, I'm surprised they got away with it. Yeah. You know, though, here's the thing about Temple of Doom. You know, that kid had, he was a really good actor. Oh, he and, was. And that was a, that was, that was a good, that was a good role for him. I mean, it was, it was honest. It wasn't. I don't know. Goonies was. Yeah. And Goonies. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was in Goonies. He, he did a lot of great work in the 80s. And, um, you know, if there's one thing I definitely want to say about, about, uh, you know, Spielberg is that he likes to work with people that, that do different stuff. I mean, Jackie Chan was working on that film as a stunt coordinator. Really? Was he? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was actually the fight coordinator. Did not know that. He worked For with Goonies? that kid. He was Fuck working with here. that kid doing the karate stuff. Wow. Oh. Okay. So, yeah, things we never knew. We right. learn on the mental suppository. The more you know. <laughs> Brought to you by stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, you know, Good stuff. Good stuff like that. Oh. How about you, Josh? What do you want to dress up as your next convention? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh it's I've never actually dressed up at a con convention, but I do I've always enjoyed making cool costumes and stuff or, yeah. or like I've always enjoyed at the eleventh hour like throwing something together and having it like <laughs> rock. Uh like it's I made myself like. a, I made myself an awesome uh, shat like the shadow costume for for. Oh, oh that's awesome! I'm, like, I'm a cool. huge like shadow fan, right? Yeah, really. So, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. So, but I <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, go on. Give him I, had, I had a legit like wide brimmed <laughs> black hat. Yes. And, like oh nice. Like a cloak and like like double breasted you know trench coat like you know and I made I made holsters. For like oh. you know two forty fives. That's cool. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. And I, put, I had a I had a cape and I had you know the thing with the gloves and you know the, the and mat. I yeah, popped yeah, the up mask. collar and I go to like you know my friend's Halloween party and it's like it's supposed to be like villains and heroes, so you know my my wife went as Alex from uh, Clockwork Orange so she had like the white outfit with the oh, bowler yeah. hat and like yep. you know nice you yeah know, and the, the yeah. eye eye makeup so, yeah very cool. <laughs> so people are looking at me and they're like who the fuck are you supposed to be? <laughs> and, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm the shadow, yo. And so they look up on the phone, like, two, two, two. Oh my God, you look just like him. <laughs> no fooling. <laughs> yeah. You know. For a moment, you I know, thought you were a dark man. Oh, which Obscurus is another one. Like cosplay. probably what they were saying to you, right? Well, no, they don't know dark man either. Oh, you know, oh they, man. Yeah. No, they don't know Dark Man either. You know, the party of Philistines. Yeah. Turn no, in love, your nerd cards. I love Imagine I love, if he went as a spider. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but that was that was one of my favorite, like, you know. Yeah, like, I love the 1940s pulp. 
heroes. I mean, that that's one yeah. of those yeah. things. I mean, especially, you know, the shadow, the spider, those sort of, you know, like the, the, the phantom. The, uh, yes. The fa- I love the phantom like we said earlier, yeah. the phantom. Yes. Who was actually, I think the very green first Hornet? costume superhero. Oh, the green horn. Yeah. The, green Hornet. Actually, I'd love to find like a 1940s green Hornet. A friend of mine has one. It's like the full mask though. Yeah. Not that like the, like the uh, 1960s series, like the full right. face mask. And, uh, hell with you, Seth Rogen, for fucking up the Green Hornet. Yeah. <laughs> I think I feel like with that movie, they were trying to do lightning in a bottle, where they struck it. They struck gold with Michael Keaton as Batman. Yeah. So they figured we'll get another comedy guy, have him like slim down, and he'll. They're Twenty years too late, though. Yeah, well, exactly. I think <laughs> there were some redeeming qualities to that film. However, there were some things like like Seth Rogen just was miscast. I think that was the biggest problem with that film. Well, the but... guy who directed it did some really good Bjork videos. Uh, Michelle Gondry. <laughs> yeah. No, I, yeah. I'm serious. No, yeah, no, I agree. Yes, no, he was awesome. Um, okay, here's a good question. If you had to the chance to remake any movie um, in the last 40 years, uh, you know, I know, obviously, that we have the world of remakes that are coming out of Hollywood right now. Too many. What would be that remake and, uh, you know, why would you remake it? Start with you, Josh. Me? Yeah. No. On the spot, like, do it. I feel like Skip hasn't got a chance to talk in a while. Yeah, but... Skip. Uh, Star Crash. <laughs> oh, oh, yes! <laughs> nice. Nice. And everyone has to have a perm. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the bald guy. As long as the you, they all dress like Carolyn Monroe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm I... actually I'm actually friends with Luigi. Um, <laughs> Luigi Cozy. Oh really? wow! Yeah, yeah cool. I mean, actually, he actually came to the Shauna Shea Film Festival and showed Blood. Uh, we had the North American premiere of Blood on Melier's Moon, like his first movie in years. Oh wow! And he actually sent me a, a message before he said, "Skip, I, I don't know what to do about this movie." It's getting good reviews. I've never got good reviews. <laughs> I've never had a good review. <laughs> Did he ever see like the um, Mystery Science Theater three thousand? Oh, oh, he, he, he's very. Um, actually, he appreciated it because it it, it created more sales. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he's he's very pragmatic that way. But he uh, he has a line in in Blood on Millie's Moon. He actually plays himself when when he he's, he has this nightmare and this this reviewer is, is saying oh he's the worst filmmaker in italy he he he's the ed wood of italy he's the ed and he then <laughs> he wakes up and he wakes his wife up and my wife and now oh, i had this horrible nightmare i this reviewer said i'm i'm the ed wood of italy and she said what's the problem with that everybody <laughs> knows ed wood <laughs> <laughs> that's good at least but he's I, not I, the I, coleman I would, francis I would take of italy. a shot at that that would be a fun movie to watch again how about you, Josh? Yeah. Um, Logan's Run. Ooh. Yes. Another Ooh. good one from the if 70s. They, if he did it the way the original novel did it. If, yeah. Just I to remember, differentiate. I could just, because I've only ever seen the, um, uh, like the 75, uh, you know, version of it. Uh, who, who is that in the, the lead there? Oh, Michael York. Michael, Michael York. York. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. I think it's such a, a really cool You prep. can live. Yeah, you can live. You can live. Well, it also had, it also had pre- <laughs> sort of Peter Houston off in it as the old man, which yeah, is one of my Houston, favorite characters yeah, with, in it. With all the cats. yeah, that's the way I imagine myself in my no elderly years. No sanctuary. You know, T. S. Eliot said something about cats once. Uh, yeah, but I could just see that, like with the today's technology, like in a, a, a grand vision, like I could see that being done. I almost, I'm almost wearing like a Sandman costume right now. Yes, you are. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> Like I could, I could see that be being done like in a really, really cool way. And what's really uh, funny to think about is I think Logan's Run and Star, like the first Star Wars, only came out like a couple of years. Yes, I mean, yeah, that's right. They look like they're almost like a decade apart, like in terms of uh, you know, yeah. You, yeah, I mean, like it's everything is so kind of chintzy and cheesy in, in uh, Logan's Run uh d- design wise i mean it works it works i, I don't know I, I was just gonna say like sometimes it kind of feels like like somebody said that cg looks real but seems fake whereas right. whereas the practical effects look fake but feel real sure yes. something to that nature i'm probably butchering it but i get i get what you mean if you ever look <laughs> it up there was actually a a a, a, t- uh, 
a, a band that did a a, a theme a, a soundtrack to a, a Logan's Run sequel that was never that it, it was sort of a it was it was never made it was never there was never a sequel but they made a soundtrack to a you know if Logan's Run had a sequel mm, yeah. and it's called Logan's Sanctuary so it's it's huh. great music if you ever well, listen it's based to it. on a book series so there's actually yeah. three books in the series yes. Logan's Run was the first book and um the franchise. Mind, Let's do that this. there you go franchise <laughs> right there hey Disney buy that um cuz you know they they got enough <laughs> they money buy to buy everything that stuff. yeah i think it's actually really kind of interesting skip mentioned Star Crash, which happened after Star Wars came out, and you mentioned uh, Logan's Run, which is a movie that came out before Star Wars, mm. and those two movies are kind of like the polar opposites of each other, like, because, you know, after Star Wars came out, suddenly everybody came out with stuff, yeah. um, you know, and, uh, you know, I, if I were to actually remake a movie, um, I would actually really go far back, and I would go back to uh, Forbidden Planet. Oh, and the reason why I would do Forbidden Planet is because I think that the story is just a very solid, well-written story, um, and you could modernize that for today. I mean, it's certainly been a long time. The, the story itself was what inspired TV shows like Star Trek, and you know, it was a it was probably the first real serious sci-fi movie that was ever really taken by by the studios yeah. that said okay, this, this isn't just a genre for kids anymore. We can, we can yeah, it's have, reaching out to another audience. We can have more adult kind of conversations and we can have certain things. And if you watch Forbidden Planet today, it's a very dated, like, <laughs> 50s kind of sensibilities where it's an all-white cast and there's only one female. And, you know, yeah. it's, it's just that, that would certainly... Why? Certainly Why other... was I programmed to feel pain? <laughs> 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 i mean there there i mean i love that movie just for the aesthetics and obviously i grew up watching that film with my dad you know yeah and oh I, okay you know yeah. it's just it's just a it's just one of those sci-fi movies i Bad watched one. um it would be a toss-up between that or metropolis yes mm. now there's a Ooh, movie i don't know i would i don't know anyone should touch that metropolis is a yeah. hard one to do though the only thing about Metropolis that I've seen recently has been the uh, the 4K 60 frame upgrade that they yeah. did. Have you seen that? I have. That's insane. That, that looks yes. so that, pristine and you so clear. You watch that film and just the, the 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 stylistic you know visuals in that movie. Oh yeah, like the uh, the faraway shot the the shots of the city mm -hmm. with with the space with uh, spaceships, but the, the the crafts moving through air. Yeah, it, 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 the, for that time it was just unheard of. The scenes that always kind of got effects. me though was the one, the one of the actress when she's, uh, they've transferred her into the, you know, the robot, her being into the robot, and she's sort of yeah. being mischievous, and she's just sort of looking around like just that. Oh yeah, I just, I just the way she looked in that is just so, it always grabs me. I think one of the things that always got me is the visuals of death. Yes. You know, the playing the flute. And like, and just the 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 death with the sickle, I was just like, wow. Well, also the sil sim the symbolism <laughs> of uh, <laughs> German expressionism. Yes, this the the uh, symbol. You turned into Daffy Duck. <laughs> I certainly have, but uh, just like you had like the the uh, the crosses in one side when they're talking, and then you had like the pentagram when they're trying to like uh, you know re you know create yeah. the robot. That sort of sim. It was interesting, especially at a time. When it's like there's a lot of like that, I don't I don't know if the words iconography or it's just like those those symbols of like you yeah. know like the, the 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 you know the very Christian looking crosses and then the right, look right, right. The, the, the sort of I guess paganism ideal like bringing that in yeah, at the yeah. time it was kind of like one of those first sci-fi movies you know, and are we tampering you know. in things we shouldn't be you know all right Jamie what's yours yeah. See, that's a problem for me because I, there are so many movies that have already been remade and remade and rehashed. I mean, there's so many like like Spider Man. How many times can you do Spider Man over and over and over again? <laughs> there are but kind I feel of like things... that's one of those characters that you can st is still open to interpretation. You can still do more of it, but I want to see just. I actually prefer seeing more fresh, original ideas from not the mainstream media. You know, I agree. Not, not from the main uh, studios, Paramount or or Sony or anything like that. I actually like seeing the ideas of people that who have no choice to be creative when they, when they really have 
no money to work on a movie and they you can see that they're putting their their blood sweat and tears into a movie yeah and it and it comes across on the film well something I mean, you'd like to do an adaptation it, of i don't really know he's thinking you know what though yeah diary of a black widow <laughs> i still feel like diary of a black widow can can be made somehow mm-hmm. oh thank you we'll get to it <laughs> there you go brett a little plug for your stuff thanks <laughs> as for me i actually my, one of my things i wanted to do as a pet project was evil and was the loved one and nice. uh I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. It was a, they ended up doing an ad- adaptation of it as a film in 1965. And it starred Robert Morris, uh, John Gilgood, uh, Jonathan Winters was in it. It was it, it was very it wasn't very much like the original novel, but the original novel was it was all about the American the American funerary business. Uh, Evelyn Lenoir came to New Hollywood to do an adaptation of Rise Heads Revisited, and uh, he just he was so put off by you know like. Hollywood that he ended up, uh, but he ended up, you know, going around checking out a, like a lot of the cemeteries, like uh, Forest Lawn, and he was just sort of like really taken aback by it, like the way we treat the dead in uh, in America. So he did this whole thing that's sort of a parody of the funerary business in America. And I, I was I have always wanted to do sort of a uh, I would love to do like a, a movie or a graphic novel or something based on that because it, it's like just. It's like the, sort of that very black comedy sort of stuff that I, I've always kind of enjoyed where, you know, it's like the, the main, the, the character Dennis Barlow is sort of an expatriot from England who's uh, sort of in exile with, it, with an, ol- an older friend who's also a, a former actor who ends up, uh, you know, killing himself and he's got to get, you know, find uh, a, a way to, you know, sort of, uh, a few, you know, get him embalmed and he ends up going to this uh, Whispering Glades, which was uh, a... Uh, it was supposed to be like Forest Lawn in uh, Hollywood. And one of the characters in it is this uh, character by the name of Mr. Joy Boy, who's like the head mortician. And he's like this frumpy 35 year old guy who's, you know, but he's like the, who lives with his mother, but he, he's like the best at what he does. So it's like this very, it's very macabre. It's very, and uh, Dennis falls in love with one of the, the women who's a mortician in it, who's also enamored by this Mr. Joy Boy, who's the head embalmer. Nice. So it's like this whole love triangle that's like so ridiculous, but it's just, if you ever get a chance to read the book, it's fantastic. Nice. It's probably one of my favorite Evil and Wah books. Cool. So that would be the one I'd, I'd really want to do a movie of and do it right. Yeah. And would it star Muppets? <laughs> no, Jamie, it would not star Muppets. But I could see it done like early, like like when Tim Burton was doing films like Beetlejuice or Ed Wood, just having that feel to it. Yeah. Having like a, it's like having it set in like the late 1940s when the, the movie was set and just, you know, having, you know, ha- you know, having places, uh, you know, looking at places like uh, Mount Auburn out in, uh, out in Massachusetts as a backdrop and places like that as the whisper, as whispering glades. Well, going back to what you said, Jamie, about original content and stuff like that, I remember just like you and uh, like writing scripts and everything else like that. You read a script that I read, I wrote a couple of like years ago uh, about, um, remember the one where the guy's going for a promotion at a job? The promotion. Yes. The promotion was a script. And I'm still, I still have that on the back burner as one of my projects. It's a very short script. I think it was about 25 pages. I have to look at it, but basically it's about a guy who he's getting a promotion. And what happens is he gets into an accident where his head gets hit. And then he starts having these flashbacks of some other thing that going on in his life. He can't remember. And then all of a sudden, like he's having panic attacks and everything else like that. He's seeing things. Uh, violent images like that are going on in his head. And then he, he starts to realize that what he's in is not in reality. He's actually in a prison and the promotion was supposed to be him leaving that prison and going out into regular society. But because he got his head hit whacked the injury, yeah. the injury, it has that twist at the end. So that's the project I've kind of had in the back burner to do. So what is it, Jamie? What's that sound? Oh, is that my heater? <laughs> I think that's you. <laughs> yeah, that's my heater. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Well, actually, I actually uh, need to cut this short. All right. No, you can't leave. Ah, 
But it was fantastic talking with you guys. Skip, it was great meeting you. Nice yeah. Josh, fantastic seeing you again. I High five. We need to do this again. Yes. Yeah. Be well. No, it was good talking with you all. Be well. <laughs> So, yeah. John Spartan, you are fined five yeah. credits for violating the. All right, guys. Well, um, I guess we'll just sign it off now. Yep. Yeah, it's been fun. Nice, nice talking to you guys, Josh. Skip, thank you for being on the program. Uh, yep, thank you so much. Thank you. And make sure to uh, you know keep us up to date as any projects or what you're doing. And we need you guys. We need you guys. We need to have you guys back on. Yeah. Essentially. Cool. Sounds great. Not only that, we need to work on projects together. Yes, in oh. reality. Yes. <laughs> and, and then <laughs> submit good. them to the Sean O'Shea Film Festival. Yes. yes. Absolutely. All right. Well, I'll say, I'll say it for us. Thank you for listening to the uh, Mental Suppository podcast. Please check us out again. Good same time. bat time, same bat channel. There you go. Until next week, this is Brett Herholtz saying... I knew I'd disturb you. The Mental Suppository has been produced by Brad Herholtz and Jamie Billings and distributed by M the Media Project. Theme music generously donated by Mr. B, the Gentleman Rhymer. Visit his webpage at gentlemanrhymer.com. We would love to hear from our fans. Email us at mentalsuppository at gmail.com.